With one final check around my face for any spots where I may have missed whilst going over my stubble, I feel presentable enough for tonight. As I walk back towards my bedroom, I catch a glimpse of my reflection in the mirror. Fucking hell, I actually look semi-decent. I whisk up the bag I'd left at the edge of my, de my bed. Bleh. It only has a few things. Pajamas, toothbrush, as well as a change of clothes for tomorrow. I decide to leave Mum a text letting her know I'm about to leave for Moni's and that I'll be locking the door. Then again, I don't think Mum's going to be back till later, as she's going out for dinner herself with a guy from the office. Mamo, I think she said his name was. Returning my focus to my own situation, I sling my bag over my shoulder and check the time on my phone. 4.26pm. Should be plenty of time to get to Monica's. If I don't get lost on the way there, that is, I then make my way outside. I thought you walked with her before, or she only walked to your place. The sunlight hits my eyes before I turn and lock the door. I then take my phone and go to my Maps app. I enter Monica's address, and soon enough, the app comes up with a route there. A roughly 20 minute there. A roughly 20 minute there? 20 minute walk there? I take a deep breath. You can do this, Hallie. I start the trip there. A house soon comes into view. Unlike the others, it stands on its own. Oh, on it is own. I take a step closer and see the house number clearly. 1428. That's it. That's the one. Reassured, I go up to the door and knock. Uh, through the single open window, I hear a pair of voices debating who should open the door. One of them is clearly Monica's. Soon enough, the door clicks open, or clicks and opens up. You made it! Hey, Holly! Monica closes the door behind her. Hey! My single response trails off as any other words escape me. She looks bloody radiant. And hey, she's wearing black, too. It's not a color I expected to see her in, but it really suits her. Well, I'm guessing you like the dress. You've been staring for a little while now. <laughs> Shit, sorry. I blush a little. Yeah, you look gorgeous. Monica giggles cutely. Thanks. You're looking pretty fine yourself. I chuckle and smirk. Now nah, that's all you. Do I even think of what I'm saying sometimes? I run my hand down her arm and gently squeeze her hand in my own. We just stand there for a moment, letting the early evening breeze surround us. To our shared surprise, the door opens once again, a slender figure walking out. I'm guessing this is the hell you keep gushing about, Moni. Yeah, it is. Monica blushes a bit at her mother's comment. God, that dress is, like, revealing. Yeah, I'm Hallie. It's nice to meet you, Miss Hirai. Or Mrs. Hirai. Monica's mom smiles gently, giving a comforting vibe. It's nice to meet you, too. Monica said some wonderful things about you. And please, call me Harumi. Monica then comes up to me, noticing the bag I brought with me. You want me to take that up to my room? You, you sure? Like, I don't mind... Uh, taking it. I'm sure... Despite being slightly taken aback by her hurried reply, I comply and give her the bag. Nerves, I guess. I don't blame her. I was the same when I was her age. <laughs> that makes two of us. Like, I've been nervous all morning. And that is not an exaggeration. Then another figure walks out the door. This time he's wearing a dark suit and seems to have an average build. Not too slim, but not too stocky. Harumi, why did Monica just run upstairs? She's just putting Hallie's things upstairs, Daisuke. He then grumbles something before looking in my direction. The moment his eyes meet mine, I feel my breath stop itself from leaving my throat. Here I am, face to face with Monica's father. Everything that she had told me about him still remains fresh in my mind. I always dreaded this day to some extent, mainly because I didn't exactly know how I would react to seeing him, but I promised myself I'd keep myself in check. Mostly for Monica's sake, but also because I don't fancy getting punched in the face tonight. He soon speaks up, his delivery being fairly deadpan. I'm assuming that you're Hallie. I nod rather sheepishly, my, red, er, my blood running cold. Yeah, that's me. Trying to at least appear polite, I raise my arm and offer a handshake. It takes him a minute to reciprocate, but eventually he does. However, his grip is firm. Deliberately so. He releases me soon after, and I gently massage my right hand. He doesn't say anything else to me. Even if he wasn't outright, or hasn't outright said that he doesn't want me there, he's definitely giving off those vibes. And by the look in her eyes, I think Rumi can tell that as well. She goes to say something, but Monica soon rejoins us. I'm back! Monica then looks back to me. Just put your stuff on my bed. I just put your stuff on my bed. I know. Monica's dad then goes to lock the door. A bead of sweat runs down Monica's face. A beat? Wait, all, all, all up. It's a bead of sweat. B E A. D. Silly. A beat. That doesn't even make any sense. Clearly, she's nervous about tonight. 
and quite er, quiet honestly i can't blame her <laughs> i watch out of the corner of my eye as monica's dad approaches his car to unlock it afterwards he turns his head towards the three of us get in his tone sounds a little more gruff than expected clearly showing irritation oh boy tonight's gonna be just swell the three of us shuffle into the car and then start the journey to the restaurant There aren't many words on the way there, just this increasingly tense silence. It took us just over an hour to get to the restaurant, but thankfully we were able to arrive with no arguments. In all fairness, the only two people to speak during the trip were Monica and Harumi. Even then, it wasn't much to break the seeming tension. As for the restaurant itself, it honestly looks really nice, and quite expensive as well. Then again, Monica's family are better off finance-wise. The tables are laid out neatly, and there is a strong blue light illuminating the place. A suited waiter guides us to our table and takes our orders. Feeling a little unsure, I just opt for a steak. Why do I feel so out of place here? At least I'm thankful I'm not the one paying. As Moni's parents go to pay for the food, Monica turns to me. She rests a hand on my knee. Still feeling low there, Sally? She keeps her voice gentle and low. I keep my voice low as well. A, a little, yeah. You? She nods. To be honest, it's not this that I'm nervous about. It's when we get back to mine. I rest my hand over hers and give it a gentle squeeze. I mean, he's not really paid me much mind so far. Like, a big part of me thought he was going to have my throat. No, he's not. Monica's eyes quickly dart over to her parents and her voice trails off. I go to say something, but the sight of her parents, more so her father, silenced those ideas. Monica quickly forces a smile as her parents rejoin the table. Food should be here in 45 minutes. Hiromi sits down with a smile for myself and Monica. As for Daisuke, he wears a rather neutral expression bordering on being dead inside. There is a silence between the four of us, aside from the occasional sip from Hiromi. Around us, there's the clattering of plates and glasses from the other parties. Eventually, Hiromi speaks up. So, I was waiting till I met Halle to ask this. How do you two meet? <laughs> Hiromi's sudden question brings Monica back from a seeming daydream. Monica then turns to me. Y you mind taking this one? I rack my brain to form a coherent, but rather abridged recap of the last few weeks. So, you know how Humani runs the literature club at school? Monica's mother nods, listening on. Well, that's the first time we've talked since second year. We shared English class and worked together pretty much all the time. I gotta be honest, I'm surprised no one back then thought we were a couple. And even if there were people that did, well, it only took them just shy of two years to be proven right. Monica giggles gently. Then you joined the club and it was almost like we picked up from where we left off. She smiles dreamily at me, seeming to reflect fondly on our past. Those few days after were... a little tense, if that's the word for it. Saturday was fun, though. I remember how excited you got the night before. She almost confessed that day. And admittedly, I was always planning to confess during the festival. I just wish it would have been under better circumstances. My heart sinks a bit as soon as I say that, knowing Harumi will probably wonder what I'm on about. Both Monica and Harumi's expressions change. Monica looks worried, and Harumi looks a bit confused. To my surprise, Monica's dad speaks to Monica over for the first time since I came over. I thought you said the festival went well. Monica looks away with regret in her eyes. I go to rest my hand on her knee, but she moves her leg away and I awkwardly retract my hand. I... She sighs through parted lips. Whilst Daisuke looks slightly irritated, Rumi looks disheartened. Man, my big mouth. No, the festival didn't go well. In fact, it went horribly. After the third, maybe fourth run of the recital, we ended up canceling because it was worse than we'd imagined. She pauses to take a breath before continuing. I ended up storming off and Hallie came after me. A soft smile then returns to Monica's face. Then we talked it out and eventually we confessed to each other. Monica, you could have told us it didn't go well. I didn't want to seem like a complete failure again. You're not a failure, you never have been. I just wish you've told us about what happened. You know what worries me when you hide stuff like that. Daisuke mutters something under his breath. Monica looks over to me, once again regret in her eyes. The tension is then dissipated by the arrival of our table's food. It smells as good as it looks. Soon, the only sounds between the four of us are the clattering of utensils against ceramic plates and the ever-so-slightly audible sounds of chewing. As for my steak, it's exceedingly tender. I'm no expert when it comes to food, unless it comes to instant ramen and fried chicken, but this is probably the best steak I've had. Daisuke soon addresses me directly. So, Hallie. Hmm? I respond wordlessly as I'm still eating. Uh, have you made any plans for after you finish high school? Um, I pause for a moment to swallow. 
I was actually thinking of applying for Hokkaido University. I see. Might I ask why haven't you already applied? His tone gets weirdly confrontational. Uh, well, the last couple of days have been quite stressful. Mm hmm. Why Hokkaido University of all places, might I ask? I didn't sign up for a fucking interrogation tonight. What did you expect, bro? Uh, I mean, it's close to home and it's got a very promising music production course there. Oh, Monica mentioned you were a musician. I nod. Yep, my mother helped me with getting into that. Harumi smiles nervously, trying her best to ease the seeming tension between Daisuke and myself. And what are your plans if that doesn't work out? I... I haven't thought of a clear plan yet, but I'm sure I'll think of something. Daisuke grumbles something under his breath and averts his eyes from me. Part of me wants to question what exactly he'd just said, but I told myself I wasn't going to cause a rift. Out of the corner of my eye, I see Monica mouth something with an understandably irritated look on her face. Daisuke then turns to face her. What about you, Monica? <laughs> Have you filled out the application for Tenshi yet? Isn't that the private business school? No, not yet. May I ask why? Daisuke's tone gets noticeably sharper when addressing Monica. To be completely fair, the way he's acting is making me slightly uncomfortable. Because I don't personally think a private school would be the best for move for me. Plus, I don't have a solid idea on what I want to do. Heck, part of me has been considering getting back into music because of Hallie. After Monica's tirade, I'm a little stunned. I wouldn't exactly call it a tirade. I've never seen Monica get that blunt with anyone before. Of course, I've never seen her get fired up. I shudder as think back to her outburst at me and Yuri. But just how long has her dad been badgering her about Tenshi? Given just how fed up she sounds, I'm guessing it's been for a while. Daisuke's brow sharpens and I notice his hand tense up. In response, Monica shrinks into her seat. My eyes dart between them, fearing what may happen next. The pair of you cut it out. Harumi's sudden interjection is hushed and desperate. Monica is the first to back down, shortly followed by her father. I make a quick glance around us. There are more than a few eyes focused on our table. Focused on our table? More than enough to make me feel a little uneasy. We then continue to eat our dinner in silence. Much like the journey here, it's a very heavy silence. Now I'm just worried that what would have happened if Harumi hadn't stepped in. For some reason, I feel a lump in my throat. I cup some of the lukewarm water and lower my face. The feeling of the warmth soaking my skin helps provide some relief from the stress that I've been able to mask for a decent chunk of the night. As soon as we got back, Harumi and Daisuke stayed downstairs whilst Monica and I went straight upstairs. Monica opted to get changed as soon as we got upstairs, meaning her room was temporarily off-limits for me. At least she was nice enough to hand me my pajamas to change in the bathroom. After drying my face, I pick up my clothes and walk over to Monica's room. As shut the door behind me and approach Moni's room, as I shut the door behind me and approach Moni's room, I overhear the sounds of glass bottles clattering. Not long after, I hear Harumi get quite obviously annoyed. Seriously, another one? That's the third bottle you've had since we got back. Tomorrow was my one day off. I don't see any issue. Shaking my head, I knock on Monica's door. Well, that's my alarm going off because I started to record very late. One moment, dear viewer. <laughs> Uh, although I am almost done with this recording anyway. It's open. She's certainly perked up since we got back. I open the door and let myself in. Hey, Hallie. I'm just going to get some water. I'll be right back. Monica rushes out almost as soon as I enter. Luckily, she should only be gone for a couple minutes or two. And then... That, 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 that's the same thing. A couple minutes. A couple is generally two. That's two minutes or two minutes. Ah, in the meantime, I just stretch and let a long, or let at a long yawn, let out a long yawn. Blah. Quite frankly, I just want to sleep with my arms draped around Monica. I go to rest my hand on the desk. And then to my surprise, I feel something. I look down and my eyes meet a small orange container. I read the label and on, or one word sticks out. Mirtazepin? Isn't that for... Treating, I don't actually know. My heart sinks at my realization. Curiosity taking over, I pick up the plastic bottle. Before I can read any further, though, the door clicks open. I'm back, love. What you say? What you say? Wanna slip? Oh, so you found those? I turn to see Monica with an exceedingly downcast look on her face. M Monica? My voice shakes slightly as I set the bottle on the desk. I. I sigh slight, er, lightly. I'm sorry, Monica. I shouldn't have... No, Hallie. You're bound to find out eventually. You, you, you were about to find out. 
She looks back at me, tears starting to form in the corners of her eyes. It's a look I remember well from not just the festival, but even the first day we spent time together outside of school. Monica wordlessly walks past me, starting to face the wall. I come up behind her and rest a hand on her shoulder. You should leave. It's for your own good. Wait, what? No, I'm not going to leave. My response comes a tinge blunter than I had intended. She then turns to face me, tears underlining her eyes. Yet she remains silent. Desperation that grips on my mind. Well, when... When were you going to tell me about this? Monica then averts her gaze. I... I wasn't. She speaks softly through parted lips. I never even wanted you to know in the first place. My eyes widen ever so slightly. I can only ask myself why. Why wouldn't she want me to know about this? Before I can even begin to think of how to word my question, she lets out a tired chuckle. Well, oh, I'm still surprised you've put up with me for this long. Monica, what the hell are you saying? Monica's eyes then lock onto mine. Her expression is direct. Ellie, I'm needy, bitchy, and borderline possessive. Not to even go into my depression and God only knows whatever else is wrong with me. I know that isn't gonna be any good for you in the long run. None of it is. And those... She gestures towards the bottle. They only help so much. And I'm genuinely scared that they're the one thing keeping me from... You know? I then rest both hands on her shoulders and take a deep breath. Monica, you're not needy. You're certainly not bitchy. And if you were really that possessive, wouldn't you have stopped Yuri, Natsuki, and Sayori from hanging around me by now? Monica takes a deep breath and eventually nods. I, I suppose you're right. Monica then wipes her eyes. Christ, I am a wreck. Pony. Ellie. Monica's expression narrows once more. You know that point in a movie where you want to scream at the characters before they do something stupid. This is that moment. You need to go. But please, Ellie, before I fuck up your life too. Because if I can't help you and help myself, what chance do you have? If I accidentally hurt you by doing something stupid, then I can never forgive myself. Monica's voice breaks as she says that. Once again, she's on the verge of crying. I'm beyond stunned. Of course, I already knew a small fraction of what was going on with Mon or within Monica, even her suicidal thoughts. But even now, she's seemingly convinced herself that she's beyond help. After taking a moment to process everything she just said, I grip her hands firmly and pull her a little closer. I'm staying. Monica looks back at me, seemingly perplexed by her response. Look, Monica, I love you. I know that I won't be able to fix your depression, but I'm going to do my damn hardest to support you. I understand that things like this take time. But it's time I'll gladly use to support you, get you the help you need, and spending time with you. Monica, every moment with you is time I absolutely treasure. It's time I wouldn't trade for anything or anyone else. I love you, imperfections and all, and I'm sure as hell not about to give up on you. No matter how tough it gets, I'm staying. I ended up holding back tears of my own by the time I finished. Monica eventually gives me a gentle, yet still teary-eyed smile. I love you, but you must be some kind of masochist if you're sure about saying you're staying with me. That manages to get a brief chuckle out of me. In that case, I'm a masochist who loves you dearly. I squeeze her hands gently. I then release her and she takes a step back. I'm just gonna get my ribbon out. Could you go over there and turn the light off? Of course, yeah. As asked, I go towards the light switch and flick it off. Not long after the light goes off, I hear Monica approach me. Ellie? Her voice oozes invitation. Upon instinct, I turn to face her. Before I can even respond to her, she gags me towards her by my shirt and passionately presses her lips against mine. My body first tenses up, but it quickly relaxes against Monica's grip. Unlike the numerous other times we've kissed, her passion is front and center. Her grip is firm and the sensation of her touch is tangible. As I settle into her grasp, I kiss her back, trying to match her passion. I eventually lose track of how much time we spent like this. There's nothing more I want than, or than protect her and everything we have between us. At the same time, though, the way she's talking has me immensely concerned. Coupling that with her dad's seeming disdain for his own damn daughter, it only cements the idea of a very uncertain future in my head. It's a prospect that some people would more than likely shudder at, but it's a risk I'm willing to face. After what feels like a blissful eternity, Monica inches her face away, but she keeps relatively close. In reality, the kiss may have only lasted for a few minutes, but it was worth every single minute. She partially lifts her eyelids, wearing a dreamy smirk on her face. I wanna head to bed. It may only have only just have gone at nine o'clock, but an early night wouldn't hurt, only only. Yeah, yeah I do. We both relate each other and head towards Monica's bed. As soon as we climb in and pull the covers over us, I feel Monica's fingers tugging at my shirt. I raise my left arm and she drapes her arm across me and rests her head on my chest. 
After she's made herself as comfortable as she possibly can, I rest my arm across her back. It takes time, but I soon feel myself drifting off to sleep. Peacefully together with the girl I love dearly. There we go. I didn't want to interrupt that scene with the end of my thing, because we got to stop now. That is going to do it for now. We finally made it out of demo territory, and we're moving on. So yeah, that will do it for the moment. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and we'll catch you next time with more within. Hope to see you then. Bye-bye.